Mirish Nishenko signs an entry level contract with the Caps. <laughs> Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LockedOnNHL for $20 off your first purchase. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about Ivan Mirishnashenko and about the termination of his KHL contract. What does that mean for the Capitals? We'll talk about that in the show. We will then talk about Brian McClellan and how the, you know, the many different decisions that he has to make and where does Ivan fit into those plans. And then we will talk about how the Capitals are closing in on an extension with Alex Alexiev. But just to get it going here, Ivan Mirishnashenko was one of those players in the draft that was spoke of that was kind of, he was supposed to be higher in the draft, but ended up being lower in the draft because of his lymphoma that he had. Um, and it, he is was progressing so quickly and doing such a great job over in the KHL. Uh, it's really kind of an exciting thing to think about how that will translate to the capital. So he'll probably need to make a stop in Hershey first. I don't think he's going to catapult directly from uh, the KHL to the Capitals. I guess it depends on how he plays, but uh, it is an exciting thing to think about um, as there is quite a bit of hype si uh, surrounding Miro and what he could potentially mean for this team. Uh, this piece was in The Athletic here. Washington signed the 2022 first-round draft pick to a three-year entry-level contract on Monday, the team announced. He will earn $855,000 in the NHL and $82,500 in the AHL. So not a, a bad payday for a first contract for a player who I think is going to have a high ceiling for the capital. So it's going to be an interesting thing to think about, um, you know, is he going to be on par, you know, with an Ovechkin or something like that? I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, uh, you know, I think the potential is there that he could be, you know, one of the premier uh, players on the Capitals at some point. We don't know exactly when that will be, but that was the news that was broke today. Miro, a right shooting left winger, a la Caps captain Alex Ovechkin, fell to Washington at number 20 last July after a Hodgkin's lymphoma diagnosis cut short his 21-22 season and raised questions about his playing future prior to his diagnosis. He was widely, widely regarded as a top five talent. And, you know, hat goes off to Ross Mahoney and his crew, uh, you know, for taking a look at the medical records and just kind of really going over Miro with a fine tooth comb and realizing, you know, he does have lymphoma, but there is a pretty good chance that he is going to recover from this or it will be in remission and uh, there is going to be a bright future with him. And it was good that they were able to kind of see through, you know, read through the, the tea leaves and read through the weeds there about what player he ultimately is going to be. Because I do think that Miro uh, has quite a high ceiling uh, when it comes to playing in hockey. Miro was Russia's captain at the 2021 Gretzky cup and helped lead the country to a gold medal. After months of treatment, Miro was cleared for game action last November and as hoped steadily climbed the rungs of Russian hockey ascending from the junior level, level MHL to the second tier VHL and ultimately to the KHL in 23 games with on guard Omsk Mirishnashenko had three goals and one assist while averaging eight minutes and 27 seconds per game. The 19-year-old finished the season with Omsky Yasterby of the MHL recording two goals and five assists in 16 games. 
Um, so he is getting some great production and he's kind of skipping steps. That's how great of a player he is. He's not just kind of, you know, getting on the entry level and just kind of hovering around that. He's just playing so well uh, that he is, you know, ratcheting his way up. And you got to think the Capitals probably wouldn't have wanted him to come over early if he wasn't progressing. They would have probably said, let him stay over in the KHL. Let him work on his craft a little bit. They knew that he is destined for bigger things, and he is showing that. And let's face it, this team uh, is looking for a youth injection. After the development camp, it's expected that Mirishnashenko would attend Washington's training camp. At some point, the Caps decision makers would make a determination on whether he'll start this season in D.C. or AHL Hershey. Uh, so that was one of the thoughts. One of the things that I read in RMNB they were talking about, it's possible Mirish Nishenko could join the Hershey Bears for their playoff run if he signs an amateur trial with the team. Um, so it is an interesting thing. Ultimately, where is he going to end up? Is he going to get any playing time in Hershey? Um, or will the plan be for him to be, you know, a training camp this summer and fall and see kind of assess where he's at. Um, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, if it's possible for them to work out something with Hershey, if he can help out Hershey uh, right away, that would be a great thing as we know they're making their push uh, for the Calder cup there. But um, I don't know if that's ultimately going to be in the cards, but it is an exciting thing to think about uh, that this player that we've heard about ever since the draft um, is really progressing much quicker uh, than any of us had thought in that is a positive sign for a team that is in transition. Uh, as we all know, this team last season did not live uh, up to potential of what we thought and everyone thought they were going to do. And Brian McClellan went out and signed Darcy Kemper and, and Dylan Strom and Connor Brown and all those moves. We thought this team was going to be able to make a solid push uh, for the playoffs. As it turned out, that was not the case and they didn't even make it to the playoffs Subsequently, Peter Laviolette wanted to break it off with the Capitals. They say it's amicable. And Blaine Forsyth and McCarthy and Mark Nemish, all these guys kind of parted ways. So it is going to be a change. And I think that uh, you're going to see a lot of change coming uh, this offseason. And how that manifests itself, I guess, will uh, remain to be seen. All right, so after the break here, we will talk about what having Miro on this team means and what does it mean for Brian McClellan going forward? I think that he is, this is just the beginning of many changes that are going to take place. We'll talk about those other changes straight ahead. One of the frustrating things out there is getting tickets for the events that you want. That is why you need game time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped over the fun that you'll have, I use Game Time, and it's it's a great tool to have to get tickets to those hard to find events. You know where it's hard to get tickets. Game Time is tailor made for something like that. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure and subscribe or follow to Locked On Capitals on your podcatcher of choice and YouTube, as I have many great guests lined up this summer, Mike Vogel and John Walton coming up, not to mention the great guests that we've had on so far. So in this next segment here, we are going to talk about Miro. Uh, Ivan Miroshnishenko and what that means for the Capitals going forward. There were high hopes that, you know, probably a year or two, he would be ready for the big team. He is progressing quicker and faster than anyone thought. So to think about, you know, what he ultimately could have in the tank, 
uh, you know, and the possibility of him maybe joining the Capitals, the big team, a lot quicker than anyone thought. After missing the playoffs for the first time in nine years, the Caps are expected to make a substantive roster changes under GM Brian McClellan with a priority on adding high-end offensive talent and getting younger. Given Miro's relative inexperience, though, it would not be a surprise to see him start the season with the minor league Bears and Hershey. He'd be able to adapt his game to the North American style of play just as important, acclimate himself to American culture and learn English away from the glare of the NHL spotlight. And that was one of the things that uh, Alex Ovechkin went through is uh, at, when he first came here, he was living with at that time GM George McPhee and didn't know a whole lot of English and, uh, you know, was kind of reliant on George McPhee to kind of show him the ropes and what it meant to to live in America. But uh, he took to it uh, like a fish to water. And uh, we saw his transition uh, from moving over to Russia to America, and he did it flawlessly. And he was one of the guys that didn't need to make that pit stop. He excelled on the Capitals right away. Um, he was just one of those generational players, kind of like Connor Bedard, I think, ostensibly will be. Um, so it's going to be interesting. And I think that that is the right avenue to take for uh, Ivan Mirishnashenko is to have him, you know, slowly work his way in through Hershey and, um, and just kind of get him used to, to, like they said, the North American style of game. It is a little bit different than how they play over in Russia, uh, rink sizes and that kind of thing. So it is going to be an interesting thing to see his progression and how fast that is. Um, it's exciting, though, because this is kind of, you know, the beginning of the changing of the guard for the Capitals, if you will. Uh, if you take a look at, you know, uh, Alex Ovechkin as, you know, he is playing out the last few years of his contract. I think that especially after that, you will start to see really big changes on this team. But up until this point, you're going to start to see smaller changes, you know, like the addition when they added Dylan Strom and Sonny Milano. And now you're going to slowly insert someone like Ivan Mirishnashenko uh, into the lineup. And uh, it is, you know, an, an exciting thing as a Capitals fan to kind of see where this team is going in the future. And I think that Ivan um, is going to be a big part in that. And it's interesting that he plays the same position uh, that Alex Ovechkin does and also a fellow Russian countryman. So, you know, to say that he is going to be, you know, Alex Ovechkin 2.0 is a bit of an ambitious thing to say, I understand. But um, I think that, you know, the ceiling for Ivan seems to be really high. Again, like I was talking about. Otherwise, I don't think they would be pushing him along this quickly um, and uh, just kind of really lighting it up and do yourself a favor. If you want to ultimately see what Ivan has in the tank, you know, go to YouTube or something like that. Look up his highlight reels. It is most impressive uh, to see, uh, you know, his goal scoring touch and what he's capable of out on the ice. And uh, it's it, like I say, it's going to be interesting and kind of a, a kind of out of left field. When I got the notification on my phone at work today, uh, I got a notification of Tarek Elbashir from The Athletic on Twitter saying that, you know, uh, he, his uh, contract in the KHL is terminated and he's going to come over to America. And uh, he signed that contract. And I'm like, wow, this is happening, happening a lot quicker than I think anyone thought, because everyone thought he had one year left on his deal. Uh, over in Russia, but suffice is to say a happy thing, uh, you know, a happy surprise. Sometimes you see something, you know, and it's one of the things like one of the players that you really like on your team gets traded away. That's surprising, but not in a good way. This was a happy surprise for me because to finally see him come over here and uh, see if the player that we've heard about is actually as great uh, as everyone said he has or he is going to be. All right, so after the break here, the Caps and Brian McClellan, they're working hard to help solidify that blue line and Alex Alexiev might be getting a new deal an extension to his deal we'll talk about that coming up All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So one of the things that Brian McClellan had spoke about is that he wanted to address the blue line. And it was kind of a head scratcher for me because I know that before the uh, trade deadline, they talked about... Um, you know, that the blue line that John Carlson was the only contract 
are the only blue liner under contract. And then all of a sudden TVR got a new deal and Jensen got a new deal. And, uh, you know, we know that Orloff went out to Boston. So then the only players that were left uh, was Faravari and Alex Alexiev as RFAs. So I was wondering how can this, this, the face of this blue line change that much considering that most of them are under contract. I understand that even though players are under contract, you can still, you know, trade them to other teams. It just seemed like kind of an odd thing. And it makes me wonder uh, what Brian McClellan has up his sleeve on the, for the blue line. If you remember, you know, not so many years ago, I guess, you know, time flies, but when, Matt Niskanen and Brooks Orpic signed those deals um, in free agency um, that, um, that, you know, how much that changed the capitals, excuse me, before I said free agency, I meant, I meant to say trade deadline, but July in free agency, um, that is when they signed Niskanen and Orpic. So it makes me curious and wonder what is going to happen during free agent or excuse me, a free agency this summer. Are they going to make, another big transition are they going to sign another big name blue liner or blue liners like orpic or niskanen i think the potential for something big is really there but talking about alex alexiev you know and a guy that is i think going to be taking on um, a bigger role uh, now that peter laviolette's not here i hate to say it it seems like he wasn't you know the biggest fan maybe of alex alexiev per sportsnet's elliot freeman washington is signing alexiev to a two-year extension that carries an aav of eight hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars um so not a bad deal kind of a bargain shopping deal for the capitals for i think you know, a blue liner that has a pretty good upside, all things considered. And uh, it was one of the interesting things that uh, Dmitry Orlov had said after he was removed from the situation of playing with Washington is he said, I, you know, I was, it was a head scratcher for me why Alex Alexiev did not get more playing time than he should have. He really saw, you know, the potential in Alexiev. So I think that the next coach will probably properly utilize Alexiev and you know hopefully that's the case the contract comes shortly after the team inked Ivan Miroshnashenko to his entry-level contract Alexiev was a restricted free agent so uh, I think a good move all things considered a good guy he was a restricted free agent so I guess they didn't have to move too quick but I think they wanted to take uh, care of it the 23 year old had five assists and a plus minus rating of minus two through 32 games uh, this season so I do think that that was the right thing to do. I think he has a good upside uh, in 32 games this season. Alexiev picked up five assists and a plus mining rate, rating of minus two. The six foot four, 230, 13 pound blue liner also had 48 blocks, 33 hits and 16 giveaways. Uh, according to the hockey news here to open the season, Alexiev was recovering from a shoulder sur- injury suffered in the off season training that led to surgery. When he was healthy, he served mainly as an extra and then interchanged with Matt Irwin when John Carlson got hurt. And that was the big kind of, you know, head scratcher for Dmitry Orloff is why is Matt Irwin playing over Alex Alexiev? I guess that's the prerogative of the head coach, but, um, in any event, I do think that, you know, we are going to see a lot more of Alex Alexiev. I think that, you know, potentially uh, Matt Irwin probably played his last game as a capital, uh, as we know that he is a UFA. And uh, not not to say anything disparaging about Matt Irwin, I think that he's a, a good hockey player. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, you could uh, have, have be a healthy scratch for a month sometimes, and he would come back in the game and would play flawlessly so not to not to say anything bad about him it's just that i think that an upgrade in alex alexiev would definitely be the case then when the sell-off prior to the 2023 nhl trade deadline saw dimitri orloff and eric gustafson depart he played a full-time role often working on a third pairing with Irwin. gm brian mcclellan said on breakdown day that he believes that the caps have room to improve on defense and said that he sees a lot of potential in alexiev and the left side. We've got three 23-year-old guys that are all looking to improve and get better and get to the next level, Max said, referring to Alexiev, fellow Blue Liners, Rasmus Sandin, and Martin Faravari, who is an RFA, also due for a contract. So it does fit the narrative of this Caps team getting younger. And I hate to beat a dead horse, but that's what everyone keeps talking about. This was the second oldest team 
uh, roster wise in all of the NHL, they need to get younger. So that is why I always like to, to make note of that, that these are younger players since everyone likes to beat a dead horse saying that this team is so old that they are actually making moves to head in a younger direction in Alexiev, Rasmus Sandin, and Martin Faravari. And, you know, oftentimes when we talk about a team getting younger, that doesn't mean to get rid of all the veterans in favor of young players. I don't think that is a recipe for success either. The only time you really see that is when a team is going through a tear down to the studs rebuild and they got a bunch of AHLers and ECHLers and draft picks and all that out there based on necessity. I don't think the Capitals want to do that um, just due to the fact that there were certain agreements made between GM Brian McClellan, uh, Ted Leonsis, the owner, and Alex Ovechkin, that he would play on a competitive team. And the, the agreement was that he wasn't going to play on a team with a bunch of unknowns and guys with, you know, a low skill set. He still wants to play on a competitive team. For one, he's chasing Gretzky. And number two, he wants to win more cups in D.C. And he can do that with the help of a young a team that's up and coming, especially on the blue line, like I talked about in Alexiev and Faravari and Rasmus Sandin, all players in my assessment that have a high ceiling. So it is going to be interesting uh, to see, you know, if that in fact is the case, is that really going to be the case that these young guys are the next great thing for the Capitals? I guess time will only tell, but I do think that what is paramount for the next coach is they have the ability to work with these these younger guys. That was the big dig, you know, against Peter Laviolette and Barry Trotz is that they had a reluctance to to play with and want to have younger guys in there. But then an interesting thing is Peter Laviolette referenced his time back with the Predators when that was primarily a young team. So I think that he took that as a bit of a slap in the face. And I think that Peter Laviolette, what, what he was saying is that I played the guys that I thought were best suited uh, for the team to succeed. So I kind of see that point of view. And if you actually want to take a look at the roster when he was the head coach of the Preds, you'll see what I mean. But as far as the blue line and, and as far as Alex Alexi have concerned, I think that this is the right direction for this team going forward. Uh, I think that what you're going to have is blue liners with a higher skill set and an ability to really help this team, not just in the immediate future, but the long-term future, because we want a Capitals team that is sustainable, you know, year after year, making it at the playoffs in the Stanley Cup. Um, and it would really be nice if we could get at least one more cup during the Ovechkin era. I know it's kind of a tall ask, but I do have faith in Brian McClellan that he will be able to find a way to get it done. Um, I just think the Caps fans are going to have to be okay with, you know, potentially big trades and big movement that might need to, to, to take place, however that manifests itself. Uh, so I think that it is going to be an exciting time for Caps fans, and I think it's going to be an exciting time to see this team, you know, kind of changing of the guard a bit, and you're going to start to see some younger and newer players take over for the older ones. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals. And are you an everydayer of Locked On Capitals? Do you listen to this podcast or watch it on YouTube every day? I'd love to hear from you. Just hit me up on Twitter at DanCaps218 or at Locked On Caps. And say, hey, Dan, I'm an everydayer. I'll give you a shout out on Friday's show because I sure do appreciate you guys listening to this show or watching it on YouTube on an everyday basis. Also, when you're done listening to this show, make sure and check out Locked on NHL as the playoffs are in full swing. And uh, Locked on NHL has you covered. So make sure and subscribe there also on your favorite podcatcher and YouTube. So make sure and check that out after you're done with this show, Locked on NHL. All right. My name is Dan Holmey of Locked on Capitals, where it is your team every day. I'll talk to you again next time.